Welcome back to Midpoint, everybody, and welcome back nationally syndicated talker Lars Larson, the man who never really tells us what's on his mind. It's so difficult <laughs> to get any real opinion out of Lars whatsoever. That's why we bring him back, because we keep trying. All right, Lars, Thank we got you. a couple of issues here. Let's go ahead and knock them around. First of all, Ferguson. All right. We have covered it here. The National Guard is being ready. The governor has said we will put up with no nonsense whatsoever. Many people believe it is not the residents who are getting involved here, basically pushing a lot of the violence, but it is the other groups, the outliers who are coming in here, yep. who are going to look to make this just a part of their lives, if you will, to create a little terror, if you will, right inside our own country. Is what the governor is doing correct in your opinion, and what else should they be doing at this point? You know, it's a tough call, and I'll tell you this. The, the first job of our national government is national security. The first job of local government at the state, county, and city level is public safety. So obviously the step of saying we're going to be prepared for anything is appropriate. What I worry about is that by yesterday's action of declaring an emergency and calling up the National Guard, uh, Governor Nixon has done things that unfortunately also so aid and abet the folks who are trying to stir up trouble in Ferguson. And I'd agree with you, even during the protests immediately after the shooting of Michael Brown, a justifiable shooting, I believe, and I think the grand jury will say the same, even in the immediate aftermath of that, the police found that the majority of the people they were taking into custody were not from Ferguson. A great number of them, by a percentage, and I don't have the percentages handy, were not even from the state of Missouri. So what you had was outside agitators coming in to aid and abet, and I believe, break the law by inciting to riot. You understand what's happening here. The grand jury is our process. Many times, I don't agree with a grand jury. I don't agree with the results of a jury trial. But the fact is, that is our system of justice. If you want to change it, change it at the state capitol in Missouri, but don't go in and say we're not happy with the grand jury action, so we're going to go to the streets and we're going to provoke trouble, we're going to incite incidents, we're going to throw things at the cops. In the last protest, right after the killing of Michael Brown, there were shots fired, there were Molotov cocktails thrown. This is clearly a crowd of people, some of them, who believe that they want to incite more incidents so we can have more protests, and I don't think they'll be happy until they see the place burned to the ground. And there are those who would say that until the protesters start throwing marshmallows and harsh words, the police and whomever else is on the other side should be as protected as they are. All of this talk of militarization yep. be damned. That militarization uh, line is a bunch of baloney. Anytime any of us goes out to do anything, we wear protective gear. If it's going to rain, I wear a raincoat. If I drive my car, I wear my seatbelt. If you're going to ask men and women in blue, and I respect them, to go out on the front lines and have things thrown at them and put their lives at risk, the very least they can expect is to wear the appropriate protective gear. And this, uh, this argument that that is militarizing the police is ridiculous. Because if your kid rides a bike, you put a helmet on his head. Is that because you expect him to fall and hit his head on the on the pavement? No, it's because it's the appropriate protective gear. And the protesters have made it clear. They're not out there just to hold a sign or to give a few speeches or send a message. That is constitutional lawful assembly and speech. But they want to incite incidents, and they know that the way they'll do that is by provoking the police through violence of their own so that they hope the police will do something back and they can further escalate this. It's ridiculous. I only got 30 seconds left. Bill Cosby, 77 years of age, new allegations coming up. I would say that his public career is probably over regardless of what happens here. I would say so, but I love the guy. I've had him on the show before. I don't always agree with him, but he's been very smart on a lot of issues. I wish in this case he would come out and just give a flat denial to these charges. And if he actually did something to these women that was illegal, unlawful, or inappropriate, he should come out and say that. His silence is not appropriate in a case like this. His lawyers already said that he will issue no other statements at this point. He does not intend to dignify these allegations with any comment. I have a feeling that Bill Cosby is going to have to say something sooner or later. You're exactly right. You Lars, Lars Larson, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Continue to go ahead and stir things up out there in the West and around the country as well. We'll talk to you again soon. Glad to do it. Thank you. All right, take care. Short time out. We return with an ISIS defector detailing what life is like inside the terrorist organization and a nation other than America trying to convince its people how critical their immigration issues really are. Too often we think we are the only people here in the world who are now worried about certain items. In this country, a major nation, they're also warning their people about immigration as well. That and so much more coming up as we span the globe right here on Midpoint.